Hey guys, Pete with Crunch Time Coaching. Today we've got a huge video for you. Have you ever played somebody that you just feel that you're better than? Maybe you're even higher ranked and you just struggle with them mightily and sometimes even end up losing the match when you feel like, oh my gosh, I cannot believe I just lost that match. It's so frustrating. We've all been there, we all feel it. And I got an email, so that's the topic today. I got an email from one of my online students, Ravi. Actually, he sent in videos of his daughter and he writes me that she has shown considerable improvement on her serve, thanks to my expertise. Thank you very much, that's very nice of you to say. However, recently I have observed an unusual problem in her game. While she's playing lower ranked players who hit very slow balls, she struggled a lot. Whereas very good players, even higher ranked above her, she usually plays good tennis. Please guide on how to fix the problem. So, this is a tough one, right? Because so many things go on in your mind when you're playing somebody that you feel that you're better on, better than, especially when they don't give you much pace. Those are some of the toughest matches to win because they're not giving you much to work with. Typically when you play a better player who hits the ball nice, this can actually feel better. You feel like you're a better player and the rhythm is there. As you go up the ranks, tennis almost becomes easier because the game becomes more predictable. The ball becomes more predictable. You kind of know how hard everybody hits. You kind of know the spins they, they hit with. If you even watch some pros on the tour play and they get, uh, they're playing somebody who, who's hurt and then that player starts to push the ball, you'll even see someone like, I remember watching Serena Williams playing somebody who was injured and Serena struggled for a couple of games to where she started missing a lot and that threw her off. So here are some tips I have and maybe also some deficiencies you may have in your game that really show up when you start playing somebody who hits the ball slow and obviously is putting a lot of balls in play. So some things that, that happen is people tend to over hit. You, you, see, you see the ball coming slower and you want to swing bigger at it because you want to hit it hard. You know it's a meatball, you want to swing big at it. Well, actually one thing that, that the more and more you watch the, the, the stroke and the sport, uh, if you have a shorter backswing and a shorter stroke, you can actually create more racket speed uh, with that stroke and still put the ball in play. So make sure that you are not over swinging. In fact, you want a shorter, I think the slower they hit, in a, uh, on a lot of shots, especially if you're go moving shorter into the court. As you move more into the court, you should have a shorter backswing. So watch how big your backswing is. And also make sure you're just not looking to paint lines and end the point on one or two strokes. Because if you're playing somebody who's good at, at pushing, right? There's some people out there that make pushing an art form. They can cover a lot of court. It's gonna take more than just one or two shots. And so you get frustrated and you lose your patience. So I, I believe what you want to do is really develop a great rally ball. Know what kind of balls you can hit in a hundred times in a row without missing and feel that you are still on offense. I think the key to beating a pusher is not to necessarily hit a ton of winners because that can be fool's gold. You think, okay, I just gotta wipe this person off the court, but what if they're really fast and they get a lot, like get a lot of balls back? And then when, they're, then when you're attacking them, they actually sometimes have a pretty good lob or pretty good passing shot. That can be a tough person to beat and you gotta give them that respect and you gotta play with respect. And you gotta play intelligent. So you gotta have a rally ball that you trust. So that's number one. I wanna, I wanna know this girl out there who I analyze or serve, does she have a rally ball that she truly trusts, that she feels like she could make it 100 times in a row no matter who she's playing against, whether she's playing against somebody who hits the ball hard or she's playing against somebody who hits the ball medium pace or she's playing against somebody who hits the ball a little slower. You want to know what your rally ball is and what it's going to look like and what it's going to feel like when you go up against those different styles. Does that make sense? And then the other thing that I want her and you to look like, uh, look at, if this video is making a lot of sense, is how is your transition and net game? So many people, you're playing somebody who's better or just as good as you, maybe you're not getting as many opportunities to go to the net, right? 
you are at the baseline, you're banging. Most of the points are, are ended by someone either hitting a winner or just missing, but it's a good rally and you're playing a lot of that match on the baseline. But then when you're playing somebody who hits the ball slower and maybe shorter, you're getting lots of opportunities where like you have to go to the net or it just make doesn't make any sense. You know you gotta finish this point, but you're not very good with your approach shot. You either hit a winner or you miss it. It's kind of like, you know, all or nothing. And you don't quite know what kind of shot you should be hitting depending on, on your approach shot. Should you be slicing the ball low and short? Should you be hitting it down the line? Should you be hitting it cross court? And all that depends on where your opponent is standing when you get that, that short ball, what you should do with it. So you really want to look at your decision making as far as your approach shot and then your ability to put the ball away at the net. So many people get to the net, they play a great point, and they cannot put the ball away. So you want to really analyze all these aspects of your game, and then you can really start to pinpoint what you need to really work on. So these are the three areas, again, to recap that I suggest you, you work on, is develop a rally ball that no matter who you are playing, that no matter who you are playing, where they hit the ball fast, medium or slow, you gotta know what your rally ball is that you can make it 100 times in a row, but still stay on offense and not getting attacked. Then, your transition game. How good is your approach shot? How smoothly do you move through that court? How well do you set yourself up for the next ball? And do you cover the correct angles? And then finally, the last one is, is how good is your volley at the net? And usually the best way to end points at the net if you are a singles player is to hit short, angles that the ball does not bounce very high all right so that's my suggestions uh, for her and for you if you have played somebody and I think we've all been there to where you're like there's no way I should be losing this match but you are and so you got to take a hard look in the mirror afterwards and realize what's going on out there you know those people can tend to win a lot of matches so don't look at them don't blame them they're keeping the ball in the green that's their job in the green and the blue whatever it's in the court that's the job of a tennis player, and they're doing it more than you. So you gotta look in the mirror and go, okay, what needs to get better, work on it, and then you'll beat those type of players. If you like this video, guys, like it. Uh, comment, if you got any other suggestions on videos you want me to make, uh, leave a comment on it. And if you want a killer forehand, so when you get the puff ball that you can put it away, I've got a five-part free training series on building a better forehand called the Modern Tennis Makeover, which I'm gonna play you a preview for right now. So I hope you enjoyed this video. It's Pete from Crunch Time Coaching. Again, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Hey, stop there. This is Pete from Crunch Time Coaching, and today, today I wanna give you a Modern Tennis Makeover on the forehand. I've got a five-part free training series that is going to cure most of the problems I see from recreational players over the age of 40. Most recreational players lack the desired spin, parent control they want because of inferior, outdated stroke technique. Funky grips, poor setup, and incorrect swing pass are killing your forehand. Sign up for my free five-part series, Modern Tennis Makeover, and start building a better forehand instantly by watching my first video on core power, which I promise is going to be an eye-opening experience. In video two, watch one of the biggest changes that's happened on the professional tour in the last seven years, used by your favorite pros, Djokovic, Federer, Murray, Nadal, and it's used to dramatically shorten the swing cycle, yet increase racket at speed and power on the ball. In video three, I'm gonna show you how to absolutely murder your approach shot. In video four, I'm gonna show you why not only learning a swing volley is a costly mistake, but I'm also gonna show you how and when to use it. Finally, in video five, I'm gonna show you a disguised tossed and lob that's going to have your opponents walking on eggshells every time they approach the net against you. I promise fun, enjoyment, and improvement or your money back. Guys, it's absolutely free. You have nothing to lose and a modern forehand to gain. So click here to start training instantly and watch the first video on core power right now. We'll see you inside the free train series.